so today, today we're going to talk about something that's very important. We're going to talk about the truth. And that's key today. It is huge today. You have to have the truth. Now, the truth is always out there. But so are lies. So are people that want to deceive you, that want to trick you. You know, uh, our enemy, Satan. You know, we, we battle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Spirits and principalities and all of those things that cause people to do those things. Now, I'm not saying they force those people. You have free will. But manipulation, deception, all of those things, we want to be aware of that. And here's the thing. We were warned. We, we were warned. We were told, but some still do not get it, that there is deception out there, that there's lies out there, actually. So the world has the spirit of Antichrist. And what does that mean? It is not for Christ. It is against Christ. Yes. And it's out there. And it's getting worse. Now listen guys, this isn't doom and gloom today. Actually it's a wake up call. Yeah. I always, I'm, I, I feel very strongly when I say this, uh, that um, when we face, face to face with Jesus in that day in heaven, we can't say we weren't warned. That's right. We can't say we weren't told. So that's why when, when we do talk about this, I mean, there are people that hate this, hearing about this. So we're going to go over that, okay? Now, last week we all agreed the Word of God is true, right? right. Yes. Is it still true today? Yes. Amen. 100%? Yes. Okay, 100%. And we're going to continue with that today. So 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. All Scripture, some Scripture, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. For some good works? Every. I'm going to ask you questions today. We are being interactive. Darren started it. I'm finishing it. All right. If you aren't living according to the Word, you're living according to the world. And there's a big difference. There's a big difference. All right. Go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 4. And I'm going to read you 1 through 11, so bear with me. Listen, guys, we've got scriptures today. Is it okay if I read some scriptures in church? Yes. Is that okay? Because yes. we're going to read some scriptures today. 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 11. Now, the Spirit expressly says, which is tells us clearly, the Scripture expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Think about that. The Word of God is true, right? right? So He's telling us right here, speaking lies, which is opposite of the truth, Amen. speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Now what's amazing about this is I was talking about truth. The Lord spoke to me about Monday, Sunday evening Monday, and I started just praying about truth and speaking about truth and starting to write down things. And then uh, Andrew had his conference in Phoenix, and we started listening to it. He goes, I'm going to speak about truth today. <laughs> Come on, Amen. Man. And I was like, you know, it's so good the way yeah. the Holy Spirit moves like that. Yeah. Amen. Yes. And if you are doubting me, ask Darren, because we spoke about it before Andrew spoke. So, <laughs> But it, that's the way the Holy Spirit moves. There's something that needs to be addressed, and he's wanting this addressed. So please, please get this. Having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Skip down to verse 6. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, yes. nourished in the words of faith and good doctrine, which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wives' fables, and exercise yourself toward godliness. Yes. For bodily exercises profits a little. But godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For to this end we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. These things command and teach. He's saying, teach these things, command these things, declare these things. 
Let's not get caught up in worldly systems, worldly governments. Let's not get caught up on what the world is telling us to do. Be afraid. Be scared. You know, be too afraid to walk outside. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. Don't be, listen, if we trust God, why do we need to worry about the world? Yes. Now listen, I'm not saying not to be uh, compassionate to others. If, if someone else is afraid, you know, we don't want to, you know, condemn them, make them feel guilty, put them down. You know what I mean? But we keep our eyes focused on God. That's how we walk. That's how we should walk. Let no one despise your youth. Be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Till I come... Give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you. Yes. What does that tell you right there? You have giftings from God inside you. Amen. Our focus should be finding out what those are yes. and how we can, you know, uh, put those to use at this, this last day, this last hour, these last minutes. That should be our focus. Not on building a kingdom for ourselves here. How much bigger can our house get? Come on. How many more cars can we own? Yeah. Listen, guys, I'm not saying that in the process of doing kingdom work, those things don't come along. I'm saying if that's your focus, those things are going to go away. Right. Yeah. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership, which is why we love to agree with you, pray with you, lay hands on you. That's why we do those things. Meditate on these things. Give yourself part of the way. Is that what it says? Give yourself entirely or wholly to them that your progress may be evident to all. <coughs> Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. And in doing this, you will save, you will save both yourself and those that hear you. Amen. Come on. That's why we're here. That's why we're up here. That's why you guys know I get paid a million dollars to do this every Sunday, right? <laughs> why are we doing this? Why are our leadership team, why are we doing this? For the kingdom. For those that hear us and ourselves. This is huge, guys. Our world today is filled with lies trying to steal our identities. Listen, guys, whether you're white, black, red, yellow, people today are saying you're racist. Lies. These are lies, guys. These are lies. It is not the truth. It is opposite of the lies. You know, I mean, there are some people, yes, that are deceived, that are tricked, that are doing these things. But when people come up and tell me that I'm a racist, the first thing I do is look at them and I say, you don't know me. Exactly right. You don't know me. Or you don't know who I am in Christ. And I don't let that plant a seed in me. Amen. How do we know that this is a baseless, systemic lie that everyone's racist? How do we know this? Is it just about color? No. no. And I'll tell you why. Look at, uh, look at North and South Korea. Same ethnicity. There's a line on the ground that separates them. North is better. South is worse. South is better, north is worse. Think about it. It doesn't have anything to do with color. It doesn't have anything to do with geography. It has everything to do with Satan. Yes, amen. He, he's lying to you. It is not the truth. It is not the truth. Does that sound familiar? North and south, bad? Remember the Civil War? Oh, yeah. Darn Yankees. <laughs> Rebel scum. <laughs> Depending on where you live. Geographic location determined who was good and who was bad in someone's eyes. That's a lie from the devil, fellas. Are you Marxist? Are you socialist? You know, come on. If you're not, you're a fascist pig. I heard that from a BLM movement. The, the founder of BLM said, we base our findings on Marxism. Well, let me tell you some things about Marxism. Marxism is about material things. Christianity is ultimately about spiritual things. Mm -hmm. 
Frederick Engels, a close associate of Karl Marx, said Marx's greatest insight was that men must first of all eat, drink, have shelter and clothing before they can pursue politics, science, art, religion, and the like. In other words, Marxism seeks to meet the physical needs of men first, and that until those needs are met, man is incapable of any higher aspirations other than an animal-like existence. So until you get those basic needs, you basically can't do anything. Okay? Now, Jesus taught in Matthew 6, 26, 33, that do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more than food and body more than clothes? Seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness. Okay? So Mark's taught, seek first man's kingdom and the stuff of this world. Jesus' words are the antithesis of communism and Marxism, and it's the one reason why Karl Marx hated Christianity. Some people attempt to combine Christianity with Marxist philosophy, which may be well-meaning, but honestly, they're impractical. And how do we know this? We know this by the Puritans who came to the New World. What did they do? They tried communal living. When the Plymouth Colony was founded, there was no private property. All food was distributed equally among the people there, regardless of one's job or work ethic. But that system, lacking any incentive for hard work, was soon abandoned as a complete failure. That's right. yep. And that was written by Plymouth Colony Governor William Bradford. They abandoned it. It did not work. It could not work. People lacked motivation. They stopped working. They said, I'm going to get it anyway. Why do I need to work? I can take sick days even though I'm not sick. I can stay at home and not have to get a job because I'm going to be provided with. Does that sound familiar to you? Yes. How many help wanted signs do you see driving up and down the road? Everybody's trying to hire, but no one wants to work because they want a government check. Please hear my heart. I'm not bad-mouthing anybody. No. I'm saying, you don't work, you don't eat. Where do we hear that? Bible. Oh, it's in the Bible. Is the Word of God true? Yes. <clears throat> Marxism is at heart an atheistic philosophy with no room for belief in God. That's right. Karl Marx himself said the first requisite of the happiness of the people is the abolition of religion. Christianity is rooted in theism which means everything's about God. Yes. Marxist model, the state becomes the provider, the sustainer, the protector, the lawgiver for every, cit every citizen. In short, the state is viewed as God. Christians always appeal to a higher authority. God of the universe is who we appeal to. Yeah. The Marxist, Marxist governments do not like that idea of there being any authority higher than them. 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Now, let's just stop right there. He's telling us right there, do not believe every spirit. Test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. He's telling us, or he's warning us. But people still don't get this. By this, you know that the spirit you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming, and what? Is now already in the world. <clears throat> so we were warned, we were told, and we know. If you go out on the streets and you just start speaking about Jesus and about how much he loves us and about how much he died for us, well, depending on where you are, you can go to jail for that. Mm -hmm. You can get attacked. You can get savagely beaten for that. You can't go on a college campus. You can have, you can have uh, Marxist class discussions. You can have um, classes about uh, Muhammad. You can teach those and have discussion groups. But if you have a Christian group, there will be riots and pickets and probably some physical assaults. Just, just look it up. Google it. Why is that? 
Because everything is anti-Christ. And we are here in these last days. God picked you. He hand-selected you to be here at this pointed place in time. Whether you are on the side that they like or the side they don't like, you're here to do God's work. Is it easy sometimes? No. But where in the Bible does it say it's going to be easy? 2 Peter 2, one. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you. False teachers among you. Think about that. Who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who brought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many, now does this say a few? Listen, guys, it's written out. We just have to stop and read it and understand. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. Jesus is the way of truth, and he's being blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. 2 Timothy 4.1 I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will, will judge the living and the dead. Does it say he's, listen, guys, you can't judge me. I've heard people tell me that over and over. You can't judge me. Listen, what does this say right here? Before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. And with emphasis, preach the word. Preach the word. Be ready in season, out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap upon themselves teachers that they want to be in there to tell them what they want to hear. Because I don't want to be offended. I don't want to offend anybody. I'm afraid that I don't have enough cars in the parking lot. I'm afraid that our offering is not going to be big enough this week, so I don't want to offend you. Mm-hmm. Think about that. They will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you, but you, Be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. What's your ministry? Do you know your ministry? Do you know what you're called to do? That's why we have equipping classes. You should see the look on people's faces when they get it. When they finally understand the Lord's been talking to them. I want you to do this. I handpicked you specifically to do this. Not just to work. Not just to go 40, 60 hours a week. Go home, sleep. Weekends, oh, I get to sleep in all day, watch TV, then go back to work. Amen. You can do that. Thank you for that thunderous silence. <laughs> I know, thank you. I had to squeeze an Andrew in there. <laughs> Ephesians 5.10. Finding out what is the acceptable, listen, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. That's huge. Is what you're doing acceptable to the world or to the Lord? In which way would you rather go? Standing in front of him that day, that Lord, I did what the world asked me to do. Or I did what you asked me to do. I, I can't stress enough. Stop thinking about just now. What are you here to do? How can I do what he's asked me to do. And that's by the gathering. That's by this fellowship. That's where we get to lean on each other. And You know, I'm really seeking the Lord. I can't seem to hear the Lord's voice. You know, I need a word. And I pull up a Bible and say, here's a million words for you right here. He's telling you right now with these words I'm speaking, someone here is getting touched today. Someone is hearing that they need to spend time with the Lord. It's about relationship. Amen. It's not about how many parties I can go to. It's not how drunk I can get and still go to work the next day. I'm not beating people up. I'm saying I live that life. I understand that life. 
And I'm so glad that I had a mother that prayed for me and I had friends that loved me enough to say, you need to stop. I want you to, I want you, I'm so thankful that I had a pastor that told me the truth. Yeah. And that's all I want, you know? Sometimes if you get your toes stepped on enough, you'll wake up. Yep. Lord, it's true. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Amen. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done in them by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. We have the tools. Jesus went to the cross to equip us. We have the tools. We have the light. Let's shine that light. Let's expose these things. We need truth. We need the truth. It's time to wake up, church. Yep. Be very careful of the music you listen to. Yes. Amen. Be very careful of the podcast you listen to. Amen. The idols that you worship. <coughs> the teachers that you follow. Amen. Yes. Be careful of the books you read. Just because it's in a Christian bookstore or on a Christian radio station does not mean that it's spirit-led or good seed. That's true. Yeah. Exactly. I always like to say the devil, the devil is dumb, but he's not stupid. Mm. Yeah. Been around a long time, and he knows what we do. He knows our habits. He knows our hobbies. And he makes us just enough in there with a little truth to get us to go, oh, it's good, look, this is what they talked about the other day, you know, so, you know, it's okay. They're saying abortion's okay. Don't fall for the lies. Stick to the truth. There's always pushback when you guard against false doctrine. That's right. And here's what it usually is. Judge not, lest you be judged, pastor. How many times I've heard that? I can't count. Yeah. Judge not, lest you be judged, Pastor. Matthew 7, 1 through 5. Let me read that to you. Judge not, that you be not judged. Now, these are in red letters, so just in case you're wondering, this is Jesus, okay? For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your own brother's eyes. He is warning about hypocritical judging. Yes. If I'm involved in an extramarital affair, and I'm talking to someone about, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. You're going to destroy your life. You know, and I'm doing it, I'm being a hypocrite. This is what he's warning against. Deal with yourself first. Get yourself in line with the word. Walk with the Lord. And then you can minister to others. Yes, that's good. Yeah. And, and anyone I talk about today, any, any position I'm talking about today, I'm not slinging mud. I'm saying we need to know the truth. And people are, there's untouchables. You can't talk about them. I don't believe that. We're all God's children, and we need to know the truth. We need to expose the darkness with the light. That's right. That's right. All right? So take care of yourself first, and then you're in the, you, when you're in the right place, guess what? You can help your brother or sister. He's saying don't be a hypocrite because that will cause more damage right. to what he's trying to do yeah. than if you didn't. You understand? Because yeah. you're going to be called out on it. Sin will come to light. Okay? Yeah. Judge not, lest you be judged. People say that all the time, but they never make it to verse 6. Verse 6, do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. Listen, guys, Jesus just called people dogs and pigs. He just used that analogy, right? He did. Okay. That's what it says. 
to obey what he is saying, we have to determine who are dogs and who are pigs. He's saying, do not do this. Right? right. So, we have to make some judgmental decisions based on people's character and conduct. People say, oh, you can't do that. Why would you do that? That's not love. Okay. We have to determine, basically, I'm just paraphrasing what he's saying here, who we shouldn't waste on what is holy on those who are outright unholy and rebellious. Why would Jesus say that if we're not supposed to follow that? We must be able to discern who was a dog or a pig according to who? Who said this? Jesus. The language of Jesus. People hate this. People hate this. Religious people almost foam at the mouth when you talk about this. They can't stand this. Well, that isn't love. You need to be more compassionate. Listen, guys, thank you for correcting what Jesus didn't say clear enough. Oh, come on. Pharisee. <laughs> Verse 15, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. That's right. Do, do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Let me read this once again. Verse 6, Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you into pieces. And then he tells us how to identify those people by their fruit. You can identify people by their actions. Yes. It takes discernment to identify that's not a true sheep. That's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Judgmental decisions and evaluations is what we must be willing to accept to protect the flock. It's our job to protect yes. you. Yes. People get offended. Right. There's the O word. They get offended. They get mad. They get disgusted. They, what they're doing is they're feeling conviction inside, and they turn it to anger. Yeah. And walk off. And you never see it in. But, but, but here's the thing. That seed is planted. Yes, thank that seed is planted. Mm -hmm. I don't care where they walk, where they go, that seed is planted. And the Holy Spirit, hopefully, at some point can do something with that. When someone else comes along and waters that seed. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm, I, hear my heart. I'm not saying not to love someone. We love someone. But remember, love is comprised of two components. Yes. Compassion and correction. If we do anything one-sided, we are off balance. Amen. Today in our culture of our churches, if you dare challenge someone on their behavior, you're accused instantly of being judgmental, mm -hmm. unloving, or critical. Mm -hmm. Romans 16, 17. Now I urge you, brethren, note, those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. Everything we're talking about is in the word. Yes. Everything we're saying is in the word. 1 Thessalonians 5.19, do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every evil form. I had a homosexual couple come up to me and say, if you love me, you would accept my way of life. No. <coughs> we love them to pieces. Yeah. We love them so much. Guess what? I'm going to tell them the truth. Show them in the Word. Someone, listen, guys, most of you have known me how long. You know my heart. You know I love people. But you know I can also say, hey, listen, no, that's not right. 
And it, it, two, two things can happen. They get offended and leave, or they'll say, they get convicted and go, uh, what do we do about it? And they say, oh, come on, let's walk this out. That's right. Love you, love you both. You're both welcome here, but you're, what, the way you're living is wrong. Am I not your friend because I tell you the truth? You have to stay in the Word in good teaching. Let the Holy Spirit guide you and lead you into understanding. So what is good teaching? What exactly is good teaching? Teaching the whole Word. That is good teaching. The Gospel is good news, right? Isn't that what Gospel means, good news? So... Is the whole gospel good news, or is just part of the Bible good news? So if you just teach part of the Bible, so not to upset or offend someone, now we're just tickling ears. Where have I heard that phrase before? But Jesus is love. Yes, absolutely he's love. 2 Corinthians 11, 12 through 15. But what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things in which they boast. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. The truth is not a lie. Fact and truth can be two different things. Fact is, you have cancer. The truth is, by his stripes, you are healed. Amen. Amen. Don't let people deceive you with, oh, that's a fact. Fact is this, the fact is that. Listen, guys, two different things. Darren and I sat and talked about this, I don't know how long, going on about how different facts are not the truth. Your thoughts will lie to you. You may think you're a girl, but your body says you're a boy. Amen. Come on. Yep. Lord. Just because you think something doesn't mean it's true. Come on. Amen. We use the DNA rule around here. How many chromosomes do you got? That's which bathroom you go to. Come on. <laughs> Pretty easy. Yep. Pretty abortion. Easy. Abortion is an alternative to an unexpected, unexpected painful situation. It's a lie. Yeah. It's a lie. We're trying to make you more comfortable. Listen, guys, I'm not, please hear me. I'm not, we've all been in our, at times in our life where we made bad decisions. We made bad choices. It's not guilt or condemnation. I'm saying we yeah. learn from those yes. and we can help yeah. others not make that same mistake. Yes. Amen. Yes. Churches, Pastors, ministers telling you, you are saved no matter what. Lies. Lies. How many pastors are you going to hear tell you that? I know one for sure. Two, three, four, five, six. Listen, guys, we go by the word. It's all about the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. It's our relationship with him. I don't care how many times you rub Buddha's belly. You're not going to heaven unless you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Not your will. The will of my Father in heaven. What is his will for you? That's what you need to find out. That's what, you know, we know. Basically, we, but what particularly, what in our lives? It's not too late. It's not too soon. He has handpicked you to be here at this place at this time to do what he's asked you to do. So let's find that out together. Let's walk it out together. You have someone that's going to walk with you. 
Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? Now listen, who's doing this? Prophesied, cast out demons, and done many wonders. Listen, these are, these are people in church. These are pastors. These are ministers. These are people that are saved, doing wonders. And what does he say to them? I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Yeah. Think about that. If that doesn't blow your mind, these are people in church performing these things, doing these things. And he says, depart from me. Did those people... Did he saying, depart from me? Did they know, these pastors, these ministers, these people that are saved, did they know while they were alive that that was possible? Absolutely. They knew the verses. They quoted the verses. They taught the verses. But they didn't think it was about them. They made themselves exempt from that verse. They said, oh, that's not me. That's them. They didn't spend that time personally with a personal relationship with God and say, God, I need help. I need some guidance. Am I doing this the right way? Am, we, are we, am I going the right way? Am I listening? You know, these are people that lead churches that are going to have to depart into the lake of fire because they didn't think it was about them. Listen, guys, it is a personal walk with Jesus, which means I don't care how many people you're around, I don't care who's talking to you, ministering to you, you have to spend time with Jesus. Yes. You don't get it by osmosis. That's right. You have to spend time with Him. Amen. Think about that. They did not live in truth. They lived a lie. They lied to themselves. They said, oh yeah, that's not for me. That's for... I'm living a good life. They're not. So we're going to go. We're going to prophesy. We're going to. No, listen. Start with yourself first. Yes. This is about truth today. Yes. You have to be honest with yourself. Mm. And go from there. Otherwise, you're a hypocrite. According to Jesus. I can see it now. Pastor Stephen says, we're hypocrites. <laughs> listen, guys. You can say whatever you want to say. As long as that seed's planted. Let's let the Holy Spirit move and work. And grow inside you. Amen. They deceive themselves. It doesn't take the world sometimes to deceive us. It doesn't take organizations to deceive us. We deceive ourselves all the time. Yes. Quiet time is good time. Spend time with the Lord. And just because you do church work doesn't mean you're doing kingdom work. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's good. That's good. You have to spend time with Him.